Hey guys, fire in a bottle coming in hot. I've recently become interested in these cells called PBMCs, which means peripheral blood mononuclear cells, which really just means white blood cells. They're of interest because you can actually collect them in a non-invasive way from anyone and you can actually culture them in the lab and you can run tests on them. And they also share a lot of characteristics with liver or adipose tissue in the sense that they have internal fat droplets and you can affect the uh, how likely they are to store fat by by what you feed them so i've been going back through some of the literature of the different experiments that i've seen done in adipose or liver tissue i want to see if we get the same results on the pbmc's before i start experimenting with them right that's a little bit of foreshadowing of what uh, we might be doing in a new lab that i'm starting and so one of the things i'm interested in is the effect of different fats on our metabolism and on different tissues and so this study um you can see the surnames of the author are mostly Spanish sounding. This study comes from Spain. And what they did was they took these uh, PBMCs. You can see there it says isolated PBMCs were incubated for two hours with several different fatty acids. And they tried palmitic acid, which is saturated, uh, alpha linolenic, which is a polyunsaturated fat, gamma linolenic is another PUFA, arachidonic, and DHA. Those are all uh, polyunsaturated fats, uh, except for the palmitic and the oleic, which is monounsaturated. And what they say is that Oleic acids reduced pro-inflammatory gene expression. Furthermore, they say again a second time in the abstract, in case we missed it the first time, oleic acids induced anti-inflammatory responses in PBMCs. And that sounds pretty good until you actually look at the results. And so this column here, 18.1 and 9, that's oleic acid. That's monounsaturated fat. And uh, these things on the side, this is IL-6, which is a very well-known pro-inflammatory cytokine, right? And uh, you can see that, um, and this plus here, this means fatty acid. So uh, so we have four columns here, right? And column two and column four both have the, uh, the fatty acid of interest. And so you can see that when uh, we add oleic acid to these PBMCs, IL-6 goes up about nine-fold, about 9x I have written there. Uh, close to 10x, um, and there's this other thing called TLR2, which is which is uh, involved in uh, inflammatory signaling. TLR2 lives on the outsides of the cells, and it's involved in recognizing like bacterial sequences and things like that. And it triggers the it has has a role in triggering the inflammatory cascade. And you can see that that goes up tenfold. And when you look around at all these graphs, you know the the size of the spike here, given the oleic acid doesn't look that big until you realize that on this one, the axis goes up to 15 fold, but up here, this is a uh, palmitic acid. This is saturated. The axis only goes to eight fold. The third column is, has LPS in it, which is a very pro-inflammatory molecule that comes from bacteria. And so if LPS gets into your gut and gets into your bloodstream, that causes all of this inflammation. That's like at the root of all of these problems. You can see with the palmitic acid. So let's look at this example. So this one is just the normal cells. That's 1x, right? That's the baseline. Then they add palmitic acid and IL-6 production actually goes down by looks like two thirds, right? So uh, almost no. So there's zero um, IL-6 produced in response to the saturated fat. And then they add this LPS. Now the LPS is the pro-inflammatory compound that comes out of bacteria and that compound gets into your bloodstream through your gut and it causes inflammation. And you can see there's a jump in IL-6 of about threefold uh, when you add that uh, LPS. And then they add palmitic acid to it. And that is the worst case, right? That goes up to almost 5x. So you have almost 5x as much IL-6 when you add both the LPS and the saturated fat. Now let's look at the olive oil here. Just the oleic acid alone causes a ninefold jump in IL-6, the pro-inflammatory cytokine. But then what happens is when they actually add the, the LPS, sure, I mean, you get a response from the LPS. Of course you do. But when they do LPS and oleic acid, it's actually better than just oleic acid on its own. That's how pro-inflammatory oleic acid is. And I showed you the abstract. It's something like oleic acid induces an anti-inflammatory response like on what planet why because you're spanish and you've already pre-decided that the oleic acid is going to be good and you're not going to look at the results of your own study i guess that's how they made their conclusions
in this case, the oleic acid alone is so pro-inflammatory that if you add the um, if you add LPS to the cells, it actually lowers the inflammatory reaction compared to just olive oil alone. So you could have easily titled this paper LPS, the pro-inflammatory compound out of bacteria, actually reduces the massive inflammation that's induced by oleic acid, right? That would be an accurate title for this paper. So if you're looking at liver cells, right, the way that you induce fat accumulation in the lab is you feed them oleic acid. And so you can see that there's a phrase for that oleic acid induced lipid accumulation. And, And you can see all the hits you get. Go Google it. You'll find a thousand papers. This is the standard method in the lab by which one induces lipid accumulation. And I was curious because I might be working with these PBMCs. Does oleic acid induce uh, fat accumulation in PBMCs the same way that it does in liver cells? And it says, and this paper says, here's an interesting sentence. Importantly, neutral lipid accumulation may be a mechanism to protect lymphocytes against the toxicity induced by oleic acid. That says, yes, the oleic acid is toxic, but the good news is that these cells accumulate it readily. And you can see this, right? Nice dose response. So here's the control. You add a little oleic acid, they accumulate fat. You add more oleic acid, they accumulate more fat. That's just how the system is designed, right? And then this one is linoleic acid. I'm not telling you to run out and start guzzling sunflower oil. Linoleic acid has 99 problems, but inducing lipid accumulation in PBMCs is not one of them. But that's all in cell culture. Maybe it's not relevant in humans. So this is a clinical trial. What they did in this study is they gave these men a shake that was very high in either saturated fat, oleic acid, monounsaturated fat, or I believe it's uh, something like flaxseed oil. It's omega-3 PUFA, right? And it says, the MUFA and omega-3 PUFA challenge compared to the saturated fatty acid challenge, challenge just meaning the thing that they did, which was drink a shake, induced higher changes in expression of inflammation genes MCP1 and uh, IL-1B in PBMCs, the MUFA challenge induced the most pronounced triglyceride response, mainly in obese and obese diabetic subjects. This is that example of those, um, this is time zero. This is after two hours. This is after four hours after they eat the shake. And the dotted line is triglycerides. You can see TAG, triacylglycerides, in response to the MUFA shake, especially if you're obese, and even more especially if you're obese and diabetic, but actually in everyone the monounsaturated fat produces this long-lasting, massive increase in triglycerides in the blood compared to saturated fat, but also compared to omega-3 PUFA. These guys repeated this study. They did it again. In this one, they just compared saturated fat with monounsaturated fat, and then they collected the PBMCs, and they looked at gene expression. And just to be clear, this is the makeup of the shakes. You can see it's, it's mostly fat, right? There's 20 grams of carbs. There's 10 grams of protein. Very high fat shake. Uh, this one has 79 grams of MUFA. This one only has 37. This one has 51 grams of saturated. That one only has eight. What they found is this when they looked at gene expression in the men, right? This is in humans. This is in actual humans. They were collected, I think, four hours after consuming a shake that was high in MUFA. And what they see is all of these inflammatory mediators are upregulated. Uh, TLR5, TLR6, TLR7, tissue necrosis factor, IL-1B, That is not a good look. And this is in actual walking around humans who just consumed essentially a bunch of olive oil. PPAR alpha is activated. We know that eating monounsaturated fat activates PPAR alpha because your gut releases this compound called OEA. And OEA is a very potent uh, PPAR alpha activator. And PPAR alpha directly opposes the actions of insulin. It makes you insulin resistant. Um, And one of the ways it does it is by upregulating this thing called CPT1A. And CPT1A increases the rate at which fat floods into your mitochondria. And people hear that and they think, oh, well, that's good. It'll burn more fat, except the problem, the metabolic problem, I believe, with 90% of us is we're in something called reductive stress. And that means too many electrons in your mitochondria, too much fuel in your mitochondria. And so what you don't want to do in that situation is continue to flood your mitochondria with fat, which is in a very electron dense fuel. The MUFA is making the problem worse. It's making your reductive stress worse. It's overloading your mitochondria. The mitochondria can't burn clean. And when they can't burn clean, they make all 
of these inflammatory markers. And remember, this is in your white blood cells. They're the things that actually drive the inflammatory response and drive your immune response, right? You don't want your white blood cells running through your blood and your tissues cranking out these pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now look at the saturated fat side. What do they do? Oh, they reduce all of the desaturase enzymes. FADs1 and FADs2, that's uh, D6D and D5D. They're the things that allow you to convert linoleic acid to the pro-inflammatory cytokines. Things like uh, 12 heat and 5 heat and 20 heat, right? And, and those things are associated with obesity and diabetes, and they're associated with uh, heart disease, and the thing that controls the rate at which you can convert linoleic acid to 5 and 12 and 20 heat are these two enzymes, FADS1 and FADS2. And when you eat a bunch of saturated fat, FADS1 and FADS2 are reduced. SCD1 is also reduced. SCD1 is the thing that makes monounsaturated fat. And you know what happens when you have a lot of monounsaturated fat? All of these inflammatory markers increase. Also, saturated fat reduces cholesterol biosynthesis. That's interesting. Uh, the MUFA does not do that, nor does the MUFA decrease these uh, desaturases. So moral of the story, eat butter, not olive oil. Be read out.